Okay, this episode's about, well, that is shite episode, I do believe. Yeah, for this review, I'm gonna try to sound like that is shite. Uh, probably, I'm probably sound like a teenager, probably doing it. And the bird in the hoop. If you can't hear me, put the volume up higher. Flashlight has finished her routine taking care of when Angel Everett attempted to remain there, something showing up for a watch. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. After a few guesses, Flashlight realizes that she is late for brunch with her friend. And Princess Celestia, Flashlight stresses over her to the look of what she wants to wear and looks at the rack of dresses from the Grand Galley and Gala dress and pursued in success. But Flashlight still hesitates to leave the house. Angel just locks her out and pushes her out and get her out of there. Seriously. Angel Bunny is a really good guy. Also, he did the all I'm like I'm like late from Alice in Wonderland reference. I love that reference. Then the lunch takes place in Sugar Cube Corner, snack shop where Spike is working in the kitchen. We're in check out Oh, that's all too weird, but so cute. And it's fire breath bacon pies. Trace Park was already nervous about Princess Erin and whether she approved of her friends, despite the fact that she had already met them, which was I made that point very clear in the episode, but no one spoken to them so occasionally. Twilight friends and medicine during the brunch was not exactly retarded. Like Mrs. and Mrs. Kate, make sure that the princess had plenty of tea and drink. And princess thanks for each for fine, but grow up awkward against in hospitality. She decides to have a little fun and then pretends to sip over the cup of tea, which I love to see her little joke. And from this point on, we see that Celeste has a bit of a fun side, which is really cute and all, but well, what's something that can be quite annoying, to me at least, because I'm a Luna fan. Luna, 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 Luna. As Silver Close says, Oh, hair to Luna! <clears throat> Pardon me. While Celestia speaks to Fluttershy and what Twilight told her about her letters, she's distracted by her peppered Philomena, who is considerably appearing to be less than well. However, before Celestia can take and stay long, one well, Princess Royal Guards inform her about the engagement with Mare, and she is forced to leave. Everyone revealed, however, Applejack didn't get to eat her food. Honestly, poor Applejack. I feel awful for her. Not able to eat. Anyway, Celestia leaves her pen and shop. Fluttershy believes it's sick, decides to take it home to her house treatment. And as this one said, treated to Philomena. Don't you worry, Philomena. I'll nurse you back to help as a favor of the princess who is obviously just too busy to care for you properly. I'm sure the princess will appreciate the help. Oddly enough, Philomena appeared to be a very difficult patient to Fluttershy. She tried everything she can think, including taking her temperature, effectively made her be man on the table, making tomato soup, even having her form a patient for her. Hemingway sing together to her. Her condition does not improve. She ends up counting the mouse food and what is she face at this point convinced for me that has a tickle in her throat instead of a humility clear it's not. However, effectively it evidence of another cough desperate the therapy. Once I refuse to give up, however, try to make more reminisce almonds, therapy, warm bath, oatmeal, you name it. By this time, Philomena appeared to be even sicker. At last, she never to decide to take the feather from falling off and really failed to work. Just as she was about to give up, there was a knock at the door. And Twilight Sparkle, who says to thank Fluttershy for making good a present and is shocked after seeing Flo oh, why she sympathized with Fluttershy and good intentions, she insists that she still has taken up a rest list and she believes that, oh god, here are the consequences. Yeah, I'm gonna stop now because doing it hurts my throat. Will be dire against her better judgment. Fluttershy will be thrown in jail cell, blah blah blah, and all that. Honestly, Twilight, darling, you're too much, girl. <sighs> against her better judgment, Fluttershy and Twilight agree to put them in a basket. She could turn her to her cave. Just as she reached the exit of the house, the Lester's guard ever to relay the news about the missing bird. She and Fluttershy attempt to lie their way out of the situation in which the guard blood preserves are just been expected to be lying, include a fake cough and claim to be aired. At night, it worked well enough for them. Leave quietly, it clears. Clear that they cannot simply return from the edge. Point Twilight believe that Fletcher could be banished to a dungeon. <gasps> Seriously, that's not gonna happen, but this is Twilight we're talking about. Twilight's been around like, well, <laughs> you know, 
banish and play dungeon, play shitty banish, or decide not to risk it. <coughs> Sorry, guys, I need to drink visible water cup. Oh, yeah, they're probably better. Mm -mm. Still hope, however, her lack of resuming through her short while offered to help give her tough love. Using much more adversarial techniques that Fluttershy did, and Twilight, about the four speeds from Super Felonia, she escaped through the door to the door frame of Felonia. She case is actually no larger than a small than other viewed holes in the cage. The ponies pursued the bird and treasure the scene. The pony Bill tried to catch her, avoiding the guards. Twilight and Fluttershy find their own friends, but they confused it. Why are they scattered over the place? Lift them up and down. They find it together that Fermina on top of the fountain statue, and she allowed all of her feathers to appear to be dying. She then falls off the statue, and dramatically, Fluttershy rushes over to catch her, but can only watch as a sheer heart as she spawns her to radiate herself to ask. Just as the animal and Pegasus begin to cry, when splints the celestial to air to discover the camaraderie. Twilight believes that her mentor was going to go easy on her and try to cover for her. While Fluttershy insists that she shall the complete tell the truth. And even at the risk of punishment from Equestria ruler, the princess told Palabash, Stop fooling around with this response from Mentillion and do it a da-da-da-da! Mentillion red brilliant bird! Who died? The Phoenix! <laughs> Sorry, I wanted to say that now. I love Phoenix! Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix! They're so cute! I love Phoenix! I've always wanted a pet Phoenix! My mom never let me one, but who knows? Me one day I will have a pet phoenix. <laughs> Sorry, Gia. But you know I like little phoenixes. <laughs> Stop being so jealous. It's just a little bird. Then again, it's a beautiful bird. I don't think about little phoenixes. Oh, right. Back to the video. <laughs> mm, I know. I know. Twitch mm. responds. It had developed and growed new wings and new feathers. She explained that what appeared to be sickly molted was actually just another part of the Phoenix life cycle. Apparently, Philomena took advantage of this opportunity to mischief and total apologize. Yeah, I say she's a lot like her owner. I mean, seriously, they're both alike. I wonder what Luna's pet is. Hmm, you never know. Wish we did. Plus, so recently, there's no punishment. But Celestia reminded her that everything could have been avoided if she just asked to take care of Philomena. But Felicia apologized for her entire order, and Twilight realized the situation lesson would have asked before taking matters to their own homes. Asked if Princess would like a report, but Celestia declined. Later on, Rainbow as gets Philomena to go the royal guard and annoyed with feathers. Pink, when it successfully gave Rainbow Dash a high five, while well, Celestia was guards and laughed. And Philomena gave her a pretty little feather. This lesson is to go that you suddenly take a bird from a royal family. I mean, I know Fluttershy should have done it in the first place, but come on, Fluttershy, you know this girl, you know this. Never to take a royal pet from a royal woman. Oh, good grief, I got. Sorry. I got holes in my. I got a hole in my rug. Gia, what did you do? Don't you want me? That's ruined. I have to repair it with my sewing magic and everything later on. <sighs> Sorry about that, y'all. My little dog starts to chew everything. Ah, no, stop with your complaint, dear. In any case, what I thought about the episode? Seeing Applejack funny with trying to eat the food. That was pretty funny. I mean, trying to behave and be good around the princess, that was kind of nutty. As for Rarity being like, don't touch my dress, don't you dare touch my dress, don't you dare touch my dress. Something like that was kind of ridiculous. And Rainbow Dash trying to make the guards. Now, this resembles of the, um, as you know, in the human world, there is a man, there is a queen of uh, somewhere, and that she has the same type of soldiers as them. So I would say these soldiers were copied right out of the soldiers from this one, from the human world, definitely, if you would agree with me, guys, which is true. And Pinkie Pie, as usual, adorable and love eating sweets. Even I love eating sweets. Except now I can't eat that much these days. I have to be careful. And Fluttershy trying to do a good deed, yes, I know she thought she was doing a good deed, but then she ended up doing a big mistake. But now she learned a lesson, always ask before you want to take care of a creature, because you never know what kind of animal it is. I mean, come on, seriously, that's just not the right way, Fluttershy. And Twilight, oh my god, this is season one, Twilight. Mm. She was just going around, you gotta get punishment, you gotta get punishment, you gotta get punishment, honestly, seriously. Twilight, you have to stop that. I know it's cute and all in the past when you do that, but seriously, chill out, girl. Chill out. 
But at least we finally found out that why she had a phoenix. I was thinking of it. She has a phoenix because, well, she lives forever. I mean, come on, seriously, she lives for a long life. In any case, guys, I hope you guys love this episode. And uh, by the way, I love Phoenix. Phoenix is so cute. Phoenix is Phoenix. Is... What? Okay, I know I sing lousy. That's being a morning. See you guys. <laughs>